This is Andre Damon with the World Socialist website. We're in Madison, Wisconsin, where tens of thousands of public sector workers, supporters, and families are demonstrating against the draconian budget cuts and concessions proposed by Governor Scott Walker. Walker's proposal would end collective bargaining for public sector workers in addition to pay cuts and myriad of other concessions. The proposal is overwhelmingly unpopular and the vast majority of the population here and throughout the state opposes it. I'm Kayla, this is Cassie and Harry and we go to Mount Harp High School. And so why did you guys come to the demonstration today? Because we basically feel that this whole thing is just ridiculous and if you think about it, we're going to be losing the variety of teachers so we're going to be having less of an education for like my little brothers when I think about them, they're just not going to have the same kind of education that I've had, that my parents have had, that we've had for many generations and it's just going to completely destroy our economic system. It's not going to make things better so I don't know what Walker's trying to do. Mm -hmm. So do you think a lot of people in the state feel the same way? I believe so and I have two jobs and in both places I have heard so many people ranting and raving about this. My mother is a state worker and she always talks about this stuff. It's been the topic of conversation at my house for about, I don't know, ever since Governor got into office. How have you guys personally been affected by the budget cuts so far? Well, my house was foreclosed on about two, three years ago we had to downsize and even now we're trying to get like a bigger house but it's really a s tough struggle because my mom's also a single mom so and she's raising like three kids so that's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So are a lot of people in the same situation as the economic crisis affected people in Wisconsin hard? Oh yeah, definitely. Like you see so many people, like if you look at the foreclosure homeless, it's terrible. And if you look at the people that aren't able to afford any more new clothes, they're wearing holy stuff all over the streets. And it's just, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You're hitting one of the people, like the class of people that already don't have that much. Why not take it out on the people that have the money, the people that are able to pay for all this stuff that aren't trying to support families and all this stuff? For the rich. Huh? Raise the taxes for the rich. I come from a family that's been in poverty for just about the whole time I've been alive. And the state has given my mom a job that has put us into lower middle class. But with all the budget cuts, we can barely even afford to have our house right now and I don't think that any of it is really necessary at the moment. I think that honestly taxing and cutting the middle and the lower classes is ridiculous. When you have billionaires and millionaires throughout the country, throughout the state, that can afford to pay for these things. Where are you guys from? Uh, from uh, Local 8 uh, Iron Workers out of Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And uh, so why are you guys here today? You want to take away collective bargaining, you're cutting the throat of every yeah, working man in this country. That's the big key. It's, uh, they've tried to say that this is about budget deficits and cutting costs, uh, but if that was the case, then they would just be looking for the concessions in, in benefits and pension. But they're not. They're looking to end uh, collective bargaining, they're looking to eliminate workers' rights, and looking to destroy unions in general. And they've been uh, trying to do that for quite some time. It's uh, uh, an effort that's been going on for a long time, and that's why we're here. Uh, you know, it uh, they can cut taxes for, for corporations and businesses, and uh, that's lost revenue to the government, and they want it to be made up uh, on the backs of public workers, and on the backs of middle class, and backs of working families. and we're not willing to sit by and, and let that happen without a fight. So how do you see the, the bank bailout being involved in this? It seems like the Obama administration gave trillions of dollars to the banks but nothing's available to the states. Uh, it's, it's more of the same. I mean, we've, we've seen that for uh, 30 years, a uh, progression down that road, where we give more and more to corporations and to wealthy elite and, less, and take more and more from working families. Uh, this country's been bought and paid for. We see it time and time again with politicians that they're not looking out for their constituents, they're not looking out for voters, they're not looking out for Americans. They're doing the work uh, of, of their financiers. They're looking out for... Uh, what's best for those corporations and they're trying to sell it to us as being best for us mm -hmm. and they keep saying that it's going to create jobs and it's going to create this economic growth well w when does that happen where, where when does that start you know we've, we went through 
uh, eight years and into Obama's term, same same thing. We keep being sold that this is going to create this economic growth. We're gonna it's gonna create all these jobs, but it, it doesn't happen. And in fact, the opposite happens. So, what have been the the conditions for for iron workers over the course of the past uh, ten years, and metal workers in general? A lot of guys sitting at the hall not being able to work at all, and for months and months uh, at a time. And it's 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 still hard. Things are a, a little better, but it's still difficult. Uh, all these banks that you just referred to got the, this bailout money, uh, got all this money and didn't want to lend, and that meant that uh, developers and and whatnot. Uh, lost a lot of financing or couldn't finance the projects and a lot of guys got laid off and a lot of guys couldn't work and you know we're still seeing the effects of that it's it, like I said it's picked up a little bit but it's uh, it's still hard it's you know it's a week to week thing for any kind of work yeah there's nothing to do there's no work there's no work gonna come five years ago I couldn't buy an iron worker you got paid guy three four bucks over scale there was so much work around now there's absolutely nothing it's just because the capital dried up and I don't think I should say I do think, I think this was all planned. When the, when the Democrats took control, the money said, okay, we'll starve you out then, and that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're starving us out with the economic conditions we got now. These guys see a ripe opportunity to get rid of the unions and get rid of organized labor and just people organizing in general. They want us, put us back into a slave society. You know, we fought this fight in the 30s, and we're going to end up fighting it again. As soon as people get uncomfortable and... They can't pay for their homes. They're starting to live in boxes like they did in the 30s when the times are really tough. They'll go back into the streets and we'll have another revolution on our hands. My fiance uh, worked for a print company that uh, were, their, their profits were up, they're making good money, and when uh, the economy took a dump in uh, 2008, they told all their workers, uh, they laid a bunch of workers off, told them all that they had to uh, take pay cuts, a lot of they haven't gotten raises since and they keep telling them oh it's because the economy's bad, we're not making money. Uh, but they are. Uh, all their the CEOs and the executives, vice presidents, they're all getting raises and uh, so yeah, co companies are definitely taking advantage of, of the situation. They're, uh, and, I, and I do think it's by design, absolutely. You guys are here in solidarity, just as individual workers showing solidarity to the public sector workers in, in Wisconsin. How, why do you think it's so important for workers in different sections to stand together? Well, public workers are our are, are neighbors, they're our, our parents, they're our brothers and sisters. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes when they talk about public workers and not paying their fair share, and I've, I've read a lot of blogs and uh, letters to the editor and so forth, really uh, disparaging these people. But they forget that these are the people that make our lives livable. A lot of the things they do we take for granted every day. Our garbage gets picked up, our roads gets plowed, uh, our... our children get taught at school if there's a fire a firefighter comes and puts it out I know the police protect our streets uh, you know the court workers and the the DA's they put criminals in jail these are all things that we largely take for granted but if they weren't there to do we would sure notice it and I think that we definitely need to step up and support these people in addition to we're next you know if 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 they if this can be done to them we're next it's it's uh, an absolute all-out assault on organized labor and after that uh, non-union jobs as well it, it doesn't stop there this is just the beginning you know it's seen signs around here united we bargain divided we bag that's absolutely true and that holds holds true for all of us whether or not we're public or private employees so absolutely we can hang together or we could be hung alone